Hi, elementary teachers. It's Ashley Lennox. Today in our Canyons U Bite Size PD, we're going to be discussing social studies integration in wonders. And as we were putting together the scope and sequence, we felt that this was a topic that was a good one to address early on in the school year, because within wonders, each unit offers at least one opportunity for social studies integration. So as you're planning out when and how you're going to begin teaching social studies standards within your classroom, we wanted to make sure that you were able to kind of call attention to some of those right there places within wonder so you didn't feel like you needed to create things or go other routes right away and really look at what wonders has already there for you using the new social studies draft standards and as a reflection question just to think about throughout today's learning is how does social studies instruction typically fit into your instructional day so as you're thinking about that now i'd like to kind of propose that we ask that same question at the end and see if we're able to find a couple more opportunities for that so to introduce myself, I'm Ashley Lennox. I am your K-5 social studies lead, and then I also support in K-5 math. You'll see my phone number as well as my email on there. And really what I'm hoping is that we can create a dialogue going back and forth as we roll out these new standards in social studies and where those integration pieces make the most sense to be present and what we can do moving forward. So on the screen now, we have our professional development norms. And today, what I'd really like to focus on is this idea of being committed. We know that the last couple of years, we've had a lot of things kind of put back onto our plates as teachers. And this is something that I'm hoping won't be another thing to add onto the plate, but really looking at how those integration pieces can be there for you. So, um, and really looking at how can we engage as a team and collaborate as well throughout this process. So on the screen now, you can see our MTSS framework, our multi-tiered systems of support. And as I was looking at putting this together, the three that stood out to me that we could really focus on is this idea of aligning our content to the Utah standards, because we do have those new social studies standards rolling out. We also have some updates to the instructional guides that I think will be important for us to be familiar with moving forward in social studies instruction. And lastly, I challenge you to bring some of your learning today to your own professional learning community and try to find some opportunities to embed some of that social studies planning and once again, where those integration pieces are. Okay, and to really lean on your collaborative team. So our learning intention today is we're learning where and how the WONDERS ELA curriculum integrates updated social studies standards so we can better implement com components of WONDERS and grade level social studies standards. And my hope is that you walk away from this training today with the identified strand for your first unit of instruction or knowing where you're going to start with your social studies instruction, what strand, as well as just some places to, to get those right there pieces done for you. So our agenda is on here. So we're going to go through those draft standards very briefly because they are in the instructional guides for you. And we also are going to look for those areas of integration using Wonders as a tool to do so. And I wanted to bring us back to over the summer, either synchronous or asynchronously, you were able to attend some professional learning opportunities with our Wonders team. And with the ELA curriculums that we've rolled out this year between 95% and Wonders, we knew that it was very important for us to bear to backwards design really what we wanted wonders to look like in year six and go back all the way to year one so looking at our year one or our blue box is what i'm going to be calling it the pieces that are the components that are included in that blue box of year one implementation as we were looking for those wonders integration pieces what we chose not to do was we chose not to pull resources that came from that blue text set area, if that makes sense. So meaning that we felt that if the main selection hit the social studies standard, that was great, but that's gonna be done during your ELA instructional time, right? So we wanted to look for places that were not in that whole group instructional time that we could pull resources from that you could then therefore use during that content integration or social studies part of your master schedule. So some of the places you'll see us heavily pulling from are the research and inquiry, 
um, specifically, you're going to find a lot of resources there for you. Now, this quote comes from our draft standards document, and this is what has been submitted to the Utah State Board of Education for full approval. And, and I love this because I think it, it kind of gets to the heart of, as teachers, what we see with our students. So elementary students are deeply curious and full of questions. They may ask, how did people build those things? Or why can't countries seem to get along? Or even how can I make a difference in the world? One place they can find the answers is in social studies, the study of the physical world and our place in it, including the oral traditions, dances, artifacts, writings, and other aspects of culture that comprise the record of human life. And I think that this is where, as teachers, we see so often that curiosity coming out with our students is that we start to talk about um, you know, a, a certain event during the American Revolution, or we start going into the democratic process in terms of civics, or we start talking about different, how land masses may have determined where a group settled or didn't settle, or an impact of one group coming to a, where another group is currently residing. And that's where our students seem to really have their interests peaked. So in this presentation that you'll have access to, you can see the full draft standards here, and I'm just gonna show you what that document looks like. Okay, um, so you do have that. At the end of last school year, you should have also been emailed that from your grade level lead. And it is also available for you on the Utah State Office of Education website. So just so you kind of know where all of these pieces are found if you wanna go back and refer to them later. And when we think about what that quote means, it reminded me of that wiser lens that we discussed back at District Day. And social studies is one of those places where all four of these triangles are interacting together pretty smoothly. And we see us go in and out of each one of these areas in, in a pretty complex way, but it seems to flow somewhat naturally if we're able to provide the right resources to our students. Most of all is this idea of inquiry. And if we go back to that quote, of the questions that many of us have had as teachers, the students are really wanting to know the why. They want to figure out what all of this has to do with one another. So I wanted to just kind of call attention back to that wiser lens as far as what we, what we see. So, and today what we'll be looking at is where within Wonders, each one of these is also going to be present. And a little bit of pre-work before we jump into that is this idea of a strand compared to a standard. And so within each grade level, we have some, some big ideas or themes, which are going to be our strands. And under the umbrella of our strand, we have the different standards that go within that strand. So the strands are the big ideas. And depending on your grade level core, the strands may be designated by time periods, thematic principles, modes of practice, or other organizing principles. So it's kind of creating a filing system for students as far as how this works. And you're gonna see that that's gonna vary by grade level. Now within each strand, we have our standards. And our standards are the proficiency that we want students to obtain at the end of the learning. So a standard represents an essential element of the learning that's expected. And this, I think, is, is something that's so important whenever we're talking about standards in general. And that is that while some standards within a strand may be more comprehensive than others, all standards are essential for mastery. So again, strands, the umbrella, standards are those pieces underneath the umbrella. And let's jump into what those look like by different grade level bands. Now, kindergarten, first and second grade, students have the same four strands and then they have different standards within those strands. So K2, we're focusing on history, geography, civics and economics. That's the K2 big, big rock, if you will. From there, we move into third grade. And in third grade, we only have three stands, three strands, pardon me, but they're big ones. So it's your community, your rights and responsibilities as a community member, and lastly, connecting your community to the world. So these strands are very central to how the student is interacting with the world around them directly. Then when we move into fourth grade, you can see that that's, we're gonna see a little bit of a shift here where these are tied to very specific dates and eras within this, in this case, state history. So fourth grade strands are pre-expansion, meaning before 1847, expansion, 
post statehood, and then a new millennia. So four strands within fourth grade, and they deal with very distinct um, ranges of dates that students are working with. When we jump into fifth grade, fifth grade does move into six strands. They have more strands than any of our other grade levels. And the strands here are, again, they're, they're more of a thematic principle, but they're also tied to very specific eras. So it's kind of the merging of the two. So impacts of geography and human interaction in North America, pre-contact to early colonization, our road to self-government, United States government and citizenship, the 19th century is a time of change, 20th century to now, and current national issues and potential solutions. So six strands kind of combines those two pieces together for our fifth grade students. So what does this look like as we start to look into wonder? So that was kind of some pre-work. We had to have some shared vocabulary there. And where you're gonna find this is in your instructional guides. If you are looking in the ELA section of the map, the last page of each unit is going to show this part of the interdisciplinary connections with social studies. And if you're in the social studies section of the map, you're going to find it under Wonders Content Integration. Our team felt pretty strongly it needed to be in both places to make it easy to find those areas for integration. So whether you're looking at ELA and planning, you have those social studies opportunities. Or if you're looking at social studies and planning, you can see where some of those resources are that you could pull into your social studies instruction. A quick note as well, and I know my face is kind of covering this up, so I'm going to move myself for just a second here, is that fourth grade teachers, you also have the Utah Home is also listed as a resource in the instructional guide. So here is what that looks like, is when I pull up a third grade map, so I'm going to start with, so this is our social studies section of the map. You can see here in third grade, I'm on page 538. You can see where it is on our, our bookmark system right here. Now, as you're flipping through your instructional guide and you get to the last section of the, the strand, you see a Wonders Content Integration. And this one for strand two, there's, there's quite a bit for third grade. So when I look closer at this, here's what it looks like and how it's laid out. You can see where it is in your Wonders Teacher Edition. So this one, it's on page T28 in Unit 1. You can see what text or what heading we're looking at for it. It gives you a little bit of information about what students are doing that kind of relates to that standard and big idea. And then we have all of the standards that are, are under that same umbrella. So in this case, you can see that there are four different standards that are addressed within that one activity. So third grade standard, strand one, standard one, strand one, standard three, strand two, standard one, and strand two, standard three. And then we also put those standards written out for you so that way there was a little bit more um, opportunities to kind of practice the vernacular of those standards as well. So as you can see here, typically these are not going to be part of your main pieces, the blue boxes again that were proposed. So you can see that it's writing about the anchor text, there's shared reads in here, uh, the essential question is one. So you can see that there's lots of different opportunities for students to interact with that standard. Now, the other place that you can find this is within the ELA section of the map. So in this case, I'm looking again, third grade unit two, and I'm going to flip until I get to the last page of the unit. So for unit two, we can see under interdisciplinary connections, social studies, we have the activity right here that students can do to address that social studies standard. Okay. So Another piece is we understand that there's going to be a need for contextualization. And we try to do that to some extent within the examples that were given. So we wanted to make sure that if there was a way to tweak what was being asked of students just a little bit that addressed social study standards, we wanted to be able to do that to create that, co that curricular coherence. So up here, we have a fourth grade example. So in this situation, I am looking at fourth grade strand one. You can see that I'm on page 552 in the fourth grade map. 
And when I get to my Wonders content integration right here, so for unit six, it says that students during the research and inquiry task, they will research Utah's Native American communities and describe the tribe's way of life before the arrival of European settlers. Now, in your text set, what it asks for you to do is it says that students will research a Native American community and describe the tribe's way of life prior to the arrival of European settlers. Now, when we look at our fourth grade standard here, use primary and secondary sources to describe important aspects of the ways of life of Utah's Native American communities and how those ways of life changed as settlers from Europe arrived. So you can see that by just adding that one component where we, we kind of tell students, okay, we're going to research tribes, we're going to research these tribes, what we've done is we've now addressed that fourth grade social studies standard. So again, if you're finding places where within Wonders, um, outside of those blue boxes, you found ways for students to address those social studies standards by tweaking it just a little bit, please feel free to do so. Um, as a reminder, this year is very much a, a learning and, and kind of getting our hands into these new social studies standards as they're adopted. So it is a great place to kind of learn and grow and stretch and work through some of these pieces. So this year, as a reminder, if you are not feeling like this is something that you want to take on right now, that is completely okay. We want you to stick with what you know because both standards are appropriate for students at this moment in time. Next year, we are expecting that full rollout of the new standards. So we wanted to make sure that the Wonders um, mapping was aligned to those new standards for that reason. So a couple of plugs here. If this is something that you are interested in, right in time for the holiday season, we have two more um, social studies based, social studies focused bite-sized PDs coming up. So on December 7th of 2022, we have our K2 standards that will be addressed during a bite-sized PD, and I will be diving in pretty deep within those K2 standards with you and going through the strands, the standards, as um, and ways that we can make sure that we are addressing those standards in our classroom. And for my three, five teachers, that should say 2023, so I'm sorry. Um, so we will be doing a very similar activity on January 4th of 2023, the very first bite-sized PD of 2023. I'll be, I'm excited to do that with you. So that's something that you can be looking forward to over the next little while. Mark your calendars. And this is very important to me, something that I thrive on is feedback. And you deserve to be able to give that feedback. You are the ones that are working with students. You are the ones that are implementing these things that are coming from the state and from the district and from our curriculums. So here is what I need from you is I put my phone number back up and I put my email back up there. And if you are, as you're teaching wonders this year, if you're finding additional areas for integration that we missed, please send them along because I would love to add them to the map. Um, so if you notice that the leveled reader has a, a great way of teaching standard three of second grade, please send it our way. Also, feedback on the standards themselves, because they are in a, a, a kind of light adoption phase at this moment, it's really great to give that feedback now because it allows the state to make those adjustments as needed to best meet the needs of our students and teachers. Lastly, if we completely missed the mark, let us know. Okay, so if you're finding that as you're teaching one of the activities within the Wonders integration, it doesn't seem to align to the standards the way that we, we maybe thought it did, please give us that feedback as well. So again, just as a reminder, this is a work in progress. The whole purpose of these resources is to support teachers and students. So if we're finding that the things that are in there are not supporting teachers and students, I would love to make those adjustments to better support you in your instruction of social studies. And last but not least, this is very important, is that in order for you to receive credit for attending this Bite Size PD, we want to make sure that you fill out the forms above. So to access Canyons U in general, you can see that link right there. 
We also have the Bite Size PD page on Canvas that you can go through. And lastly, we have that relicensure credit. So really quick, I just wanna give a huge shout out to all of you. You are amazing. Thank you for all that you do for students. Thank you for all that you do for, um, for those in your building. And I hope that you were able to get something out of this Bite Size PD. And I look forward to hearing from you. So thank you so much.